Be good to go. Mm -hmm. So good morning, everyone. It is 9.27. Well, we made it just in time. See how good we are? That's wonderful, Pastor. Thank you. So we're going to give a chance uh, for everybody to start coming in and getting a chance to gather. This is the gathering, like in worship, you know, we put that on our bulletins, gathering, because it's actually, it's a real thing that we do. All the things that we can be doing right now on a Sunday morning, the fact that we're actually gathering is a part of worship. And I don't know that people um, appreciate that as much as, as we should. So yeah, gathering and study the word. That's right. So we're going to give people a chance to gather. And uh, before we jump in, see if I can make sure to follow comments as long as, as much as I can. So anyway, so brother, how was your week? Exciting. Uh, yeah, I had a, a blessed week Good. and ups and downs, but made it through. Yeah, that's that is our week. That is always our week, right? Pastor, I'm looking forward to everybody receiving the COVID nineteen vaccine so we can get back together again. So I think that's getting closer and closer for us. Now you had yours, right? No, no, I had that. I wasn't able to get. You weren't able to get. It. You're, you're planning on it though. Yeah, I'm a one B category. So Which category is that? The 65 and older. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. I know some people <laughs> have a hard time. <laughs> I'm barely under 65. No, I'm way over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate that because in the conversation, should I get it? Oh yeah. Whatever, yeah. You know, so hearing somebody like yourself who is. Uh, you know, you, you study these things, you understand, you appreciate what's happening. And so I think hearing your voice say it, this is something that, you know, uh, we should be think, thinking of doing, I think is helpful. So um, I'm glad you're doing that. I, I told somebody recently, like, I'll probably get mine about a year or so from now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, my week was fairly quiet. Um, um, made mention, I'm going to take some time off next week and I've known for a little while it's past time that I should have done that. Uh, little things here and there that you know that I know that tell me that time uh, take a break. Time take a break. Yeah, you got to step back and breathe a little bit. And, uh, it's been a wild year and I haven't had a chance to do that, so I'm looking forward to smell the roses. Doing that little. I told Gloria at one point <laughs> this week uh, I'm going to need to sleep more than I should. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what we're going to try to do. Well, that sounds like a good plan, Pastor. We got one more minute, brother. One more minute, and then we will jump into this uh, next week. I won't be here um, here on Sunday, but uh, brother and I, we're going to record next week's lesson actually this afternoon. And so it'll still be here on our, our group uh, at 9.30 uh, Sunday. So you can still be a part of that. You'll be able to leave comments and everything else. It'll be happening. You know, it'll be, you know, you won't, it won't just be a video to watch. You have to you know, go through it and it'll be the whole lesson. So we'll look forward to doing that. So, all right, brother, it is time. So you want to take uh, take this away? We always talk about we forget to pray. Yeah. Uh, it's on the agenda. We forget. How about we do that? Okay, Pastor. You want to do that? You want me to do it? Uh, go ahead and then I'll do the final part. All right. Lord, thank you for the blessing of being able to gather in your name. And as we share this time and study, may our hearts grow closer to your holy will. Thank you for Brother Robert and his preparation, the words and the ideas and the thoughts that you've given to him. Thank you for each child of God hearing, listening, and learning with us. And may all this uh, be done to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Pastor. Yes, sir. And good morning, seekers. It's wonderful to be talking to you. Pastor and I really enjoyed this opportunity that we have. Today, our lesson is entitled, Hope Because of Christ. It's from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2, to, uh, verses 2 through 10. And so a little bit info on uh, 1 Thessalonians, the book of, that's a New Testament book written in about 51 AD and thought to have been written by Apostle Paul. And the purpose of the book was to strengthen the Thessalonians Christians in their faith and give them the assurance of Christ's return. A little bit on their scripture setting. So in our scripture background, Apostle Paul, accompanied by Silas, visited Thessalonica on his second missionary journey. Paul preached in the synagogue there and inspired several converts to Christ. The converts conveyed the good news message to others. Later, Paul received word that the believers were suffering from their faithfulness to Christ. So Paul and Silas worried that the troubles might cause some of them to abandon their newfound faith 
in Jesus Christ. So Paul sent a letter to the church in Thessalonica, as described in our, and we'll talk about it in our scripture today, to encourage and strengthen the believers. The next we'll talk about hope in, in what is hope. So one description of hope is as follows. Hope has to do with trust and confidence. It is resting of the human heart on God with full trust that he will care for us in our salvation and will give us the happiness he has promised. It is an eager expectation and anticipation of what is sure to come. An active faith-infused waiting for God to fulfill that which he had started by the power of the Holy Spirit. The hope leads to joy, boldness, and faith in love. Hope also leads to comfort, and we all have felt that. We are to encourage one another with the knowledge of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Accepting the promise of eternal life means that our hope is no longer filled with doubt, but rather has it as its sure foundation, the whole of God's word, the entity of God's character, and the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Pastor, any thoughts on hope? I mean, what are we if we don't have hope, right? Yeah. If we don't have the hope of who God is and hope of Christ, what we know about him, um, you know, what are we? That's right, Pastor. So the, the hope, our hope in Jesus. And then we think in terms of what is our hope in Jesus? We've heard that term before, mm -hmm. that phrase. So Paul describes Jesus Christ as our hope and the blessed hope. Jesus not only came to bring hope, he is our hope. Mm -hmm. We have hope because Jesus forgives us and transforms us into his likeness. Knowing Jesus brings contentment Regardless of the material possessions and joy, despite difficult situations that we might be in, nothing can destroy this hope because it's stored in heaven where no earthly power can touch it. That's a, our hope in Jesus Christ. Next, we'll talk about what's our goal in Christian life, the goal of a Christian life. So Paul says that you should walk worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Our Christian life is a life with the kingdom as its goal. And we have discussed the kingdom of God in the past. But our Christian life has that as one of our goals. So we need our main goal. And we need to walk worthy of God, the one who calls us into kingdom and glory. Our destination and also our destiny is to enter God's kingdom. So the kingdom, a major subject in the New Testament, as we have talked about in the past, is a unique goal for our Christian walk. So again, when we think in terms, what are we supposed to be aiming towards as a Christian? And Pastor, what do you think of that, uh, to enter God's kingdom? Well, um, I think we've said it before here, but I think it, it, it merits repeating because it was that important to Jesus and something that he repeated, but that the kingdom reality is, is real for the Christian heart. And, um, you know, Jesus believed the kingdom was at hand. Um, that we were in the present and future. Right. So right. We're, as Christians, we're in there now. Right. And yeah, so we had no reason to believe that the kingdom would go away after Jesus said it was at hand. So, um, understanding that uh, the reality of the kingdom is before us always and yeah that, that gives us the direction for our lives so that as we read uh, these stories of jesus or these texts from you know paul whoever what we're trying to understand is what is the kingdom priority what is uh, what are the the, the um the fruit that we are looking for that, that relate to the kingdom of god right? how to have kingdom eyes in other words of the Christian heart, that is our that is our goal, like you said, what we're seeking to do. And, and Pastor, and we should be focused on that every day, not just on Sundays or on holidays, but every day. Sure, yeah, that is it's who we are, right? It's supposed to be um, how we see the world, it's supposed to be how we see ourselves and how we see each other and how 
we seek to be in relationship and priorities of our lives, yeah, it's supposed to, it's supposed to not just influence what we do, but it's supposed to be who we are as, as Christians. Thank you, Pastor. So, Pastor, the purpose of our lesson today in the Seekers is to consider how faith, hope, and love are marks of the Christian life. Just as the pastor had mentioned, these things, these characteristics, faith, hope, and love should be marks and evident in our Christian lives. So some background information. Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. This was it in the letter represented a mood of thankfulness for the church's work that came from their faith, from their efforts that came from love and their perseverance that came from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will consider how faith, hope, and love are marks of the Christian life that we are leading. So let's move on to the scripture reading. And uh, today we're reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and here we'll be reading verses 2 to 5. The faith of Thessalonian believers. Pastor, I always have a problem with that. Thessalonians. Thessalonians. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad, bro. I'm a preacher. Sometimes I mess up the word Jesus. Oh, man. <laughs> well, thank you, Pastor. I made me feel better. <laughs> so, as we always thank God for all you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and our Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope that you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what was said was true. And you know of our concern for you from the way that we lived when we were with you. Pastor Paul expressed appreciation and thanks to God on behalf of the Thessalonians believers for their steadfastness in Christ. Even in the hostile surrounding, the church continued to grow. Pastor, that, that's pretty amazing. Well, you know, the reality is, brother, that, you know, we, uh, and I'm not going to preach, I promise, but the reality is, um, and I, it's not even just the church. I think we all know this, kind of how life is that growth happens out of um, it's of hardship. hardship right? That's just true, period. And so, you know, when the church tries to get too comfortable, we're actually in peace. And I'm not saying that means we need to go out and, you know, harm ourselves or look for trouble, but certainly we need to understand, you know, the kingdom reality is that we're facing something, let's face it, and learn what we need to learn. The church has often uh, experienced its growth out of tribulation okay. and so um, not complaining about it <laughs> not blaming other people and not you know all the stuff that we see it's going on today in some areas but uh in fact a lot of times the hardships make an individual appreciate what they have or, or, or what they want or what they don't have so it gives you a greater gratitude and appreciation sure you know and you know kind of take a you know i read a comment uh something today about um Forget who it was, but uh, there's somebody who immigrated to the United States and was talking about how um, how hurt they are right now about everything that's going on and what we saw a couple of weeks ago. And as an immigrant, you know, coming from a place that you know well, that stuff was that's why they left where they yeah. left to get away from that to have that happen here. And so many times the immigrants are the ones who remind us just what we have because they've experienced that hardship that we before. I think the same is true in ways like this, that you know, when we have this hardship, whatever it is, particularly a collective hardship, you know, there's it's a crucible, right? That we grow out of that if we're willing to keep our minds on the kingdom priority. Because you can go through a hardship and, you know, make it all about you and, and, and complain. Be the victim. Be the victim. Yeah. Point the fingers and, just, you know, and, and lose your kingdom uh, perception in the process. And that has nothing to do with accountability or justice or anything like that. It's just 
in the process of being all that, you can lose your human perception. And so, um, yeah, when we go through something, there, there's no reason not to believe that God is not about to do something great as a response to that. Not mm-hmm. that God is saying, suffer, because I want to do something good, but you're suffering, something good came come out of it. And, and then we always have to remember God is in control. Certainly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pastor. And we'll continue with the discussion points. So Paul commended the believers for their work that came from faith. And Paul described faith, love, and hope as the primary attributes of following Jesus. So those are important characteristics for us to display as we follow Jesus also. So believers are to show these three attributes in one's daily life. And Paul asserted that the Thessalonian believers were again chosen by God. This was as evident as the believers accepted the message that was preached to them and received the Holy Spirit who strengthened their convictions. And Pastor, I just wanted to touch on the idea of being chosen by God and what that means. It's a complicated issue or even a statement. So I have some information here with some different opinions about that. Yeah. Now I'll read here. It says, some believe God chose certain people to receive his gift of salvation. They point to verses such as Ephesians 1, verse 11, which says that God chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plans. And then on others think that, uh, say that, believe that God knew in advance who would respond to him and upon those he would set his mark. He chose him. So, but what is clear is that God's purpose for the people was not an afterthought. It was settled before the foundation of the world. The people ought to serve and honor God. God's promise can only be claimed by those who love God and are, pl- are called by him. That is, those whom the Holy Spirit convinces to receive Christ. So those who the Holy Spirit convinces to receive Christ is an important point here. So their faith in God does not waver in pain and persecution because they know God is with them. So God will guide and protect you until you one day stand in his presence. The pastors, those are, those are not all the thoughts, but those are some thoughts about what it means to be chosen. Yeah, and that's certainly um, one of those things that you know, churches argued about for a long time. There's no way you and I can bring that to any kind of final conclusion, obviously. But the idea is about election, right? the, the idea about being elected. Um, and so, you know, like you know, pointed out, some believe that God elected a certain number of people, a certain group of people to be saved, you know, predestined them to be saved. Uh, whereas another group says, you know, that chosen doesn't mean um, chosen or elected in, in a way that excludes everybody else, that, that God's elected elected are those who choose his calling, who, are, who respond to his calling. So those are the two um, uh, trains of thought. Now, we as United Methodists, I don't know if anybody's listening, they should be able to hopefully gather what we, what our understanding is, what, what we say about that. Um, I don't want to, I don't, don't want to wait for anybody to answer because I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But <laughs> United Methodist Wesleyan theology is that you know, we believe everyone has the opportunity to respond to the grace of God. And that it's not just a select number or group of people God has reserved salvation for. Salvation is available to all and all who respond to that. It's, it's, it's a gift to them. And that, that it's a distinction between uh, schools of theology, denominations, right? So you're some of our, who are Presbyterian friends, right? kind of a Calvinist mindset. And I met this, of course, uh, being Wesleyan, the idea that election for all actually means election for all to respond to. So, and, and Pastor, and we're responding through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so it's not just, you know, I decide to wake up, you know, one day, and, you know what, I'm going to be a good man today, or I'm going to follow God. Our faith still says that we don't have that in us, in and of ourselves, or something as much as there's the image of God in us, there's also that other part of us that just doesn't 
doesn't want to, we have a bent for sinning, as the hymn says. So we need the Holy Spirit's uh, prompting and inspiration to, to put that thought into our minds, for us to hear the gospel and say, yes, that's, I want that life. So if you notice, brother, most of my sermons in the same way, I'll say something like, you know, if, uh, if you want to uh, I don't know, take a topic, if you want to learn how to pray more, trust God with prayer, I want you to pray with me. Right? So that, that invitation is, in my mind, you've heard the gospel, and now you have to decide if you want to receive it or not. Right? And that comes from this idea that, yeah, this, this invitation is open to all. It's an actual invitation, not a limited seating and, and that's part of that process that we're discussing there is we ask the Holy Spirit to give us the strength and the ability and knowledge sure. to make the correct choice. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're, we're asking, asking for the Spirit to show us the kingdom reality and to help us live into it by ourselves. I mean, who, who wants to forgive their enemies just because? Well, it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us that that's the way to follow Christ. That's how we find holiness. That's how we bring reconciliation to the earth. The Holy Spirit that continues to show us uh, the power of the kingdom. Thank you, Pastor. We just, we settled everything once and for all. No need to <laughs> debate or argue anything else ever again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. I know that's a, that's a topic, as you mentioned, has been uh, talked about back and forth for a long, long sure, time. Sure, sure. So, we just wanted this to touch on it and have people thinking about it. That's good. Thank, Thank you, boy. Pastor. So we'll continue with our scripture verses. Again, we're in First Thessalonians chapter one. This is verses six through ten. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit, in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you initiated both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece, throughout both Macedonia, Archaea, and now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Archaea. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. Well, that's a wonderful pastor's mm. thought. That's a wonderful verse. Yeah. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us and how you turned away from idols to serve the living and the true God. And they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. So some discussion points. So the Thessalonians believers received Jesus as a model for how they should live with joy in spite of great suffering. And, and Pastor, that, that applies to us that we should, and we've talked about it before, that the using or, or following Jesus in our lives as a model for us to how to lead our lives. Sure. In the Thessalonians there were, were under great siege and having a lot of problems and, and they refused to not follow Jesus, no matter what it costs them. Yeah, and you know, it's always a temptation. For all of us, right? It's not just the Thessalonians. It's not just any other group that we've seen, you know, throughout church history. We all have that temptation that when something happens that we can't explain, or when a circumstance arises that you know goes against our, our understanding of what is good or just or fair, then the temptation is to you know, blame God or you know, turn away and you know find find hope or solace somewhere else. Uh, that opening line that you had. You know, one of the opening slides, you know, our hope, Jesus doesn't just give us hope. Jesus is our hope, right? That's that's important because so then we recognize how he faced his life with his turmoil brought on by his kingdom reality. Right? That's why they killed him, because he was he wasn't willing to let go of the kingdom and to follow what you know, anybody else would, would have wanted him to follow. So as we go through our circumstances, whether they're related to the kingdom or not, and that's one of the conversations you know, we have to have is you know, things that happen in life, sometimes things just happen, right? have nothing to do with the kingdom, have nothing to do with you know, God trying to get your attention or to punish you or anything. It's just, it's, 
Man, when we live in this world, things happen that just that hurt and that aren't mm -hmm. right. But as we go through those things, we still have the choice to decide how we're going to live through them. Can we hold on to our hope that hope in Christ and our hope that Christ gives us and, and to the kingdom reality that, that is still with us, even in our suffering? That, that is a hard thing to do. Yeah, even to the difficult times. It is. And that's where faith, that we've been talking about faith and hope and love come in. And, and and the church, right? I mean, we need the church. That if we're suffering, that we're going through, um, why would I think that I need it? I can or I would want to do that on my own. God has given me the church, the family of God, to 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 be a presence uh, for me uh, through that hard time, to remind me of that hope, to to pick me up, right? and provide some comfort to where I come. Yeah, all those things that uh, that, that uh, the church should be for one another. Thank you, Pastor. So Paul complimented the church because they had become an example for all believers. Paul said that the Thessalonian church spread the message of faith, the testimony of hope, and the power of love to the world every day. And it was a place where people lacking faith or feeling hopeless and unlovable could find those blessings. So the Thessalonians were reminded that because they were waiting for the return of Jesus, they would be saved from the coming wrath. In, in Pastor Hearing conclusion, Paul's work with the new believers nursed them, cherished them, and fostered them to walk worthy of God so they might enter into his kingdom and participate in his glory. The Thessalonian believers, despite difficult circumstances, demonstrated faith, hope, and love. Likewise, Christian life in terms of our living response to God and his work in us spring from these characteristics, faith, hope, and love. Everything we do as Christians relate to these three virtues. So these three gifts of the spirit will never end. Faith, hope, and love will always remain and always remain with us. Faith, hope, and love are the three gifts that will be ours throughout eternity. God in his goodness gives us the privilege of possessing these gifts today. And we through these virtues can demonstrate God's godliness living in our lives by demonstrating those virtues. And as a prompting for leading godly lives, people need to know that Jesus came to bring hope, that he is our hope, and that our hope is alive. So just as surely as Christ was raised from the dead, and ascended into heaven, he will return. So is the hope, and this is one of the questions we have, is the hope of Jesus real and alive in you, in all of us as individuals? Is the spirit alive and working in you every day to demonstrate faith, hope, and love in your life? We should persevere in demonstrating faith, hope, and love in our lives that Christ may be seen in us. And, and Pastor, why is it important that Christ is seen in us? We call ourselves Christians. Right? We're yeah. supposed to follow. Um, the one we follow is supposed to, it should be evident, right? There's an old uh, story I've shared before where a stranger came up to an Amish man and asked him if he was Christian. And the Amish man said, I don't know, you'll have to ask my neighbor. Right. Yeah. So that, you know, the neighbor would be able to tell you for sure because of how he knew that man. Right. The kind of uh, life that he lived and who we are says something about who God is and who we think God is. Hey, I bet you want keys, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. So that's why it's important to you know, live out this uh, Christian life because we are saying something about who God is. And if God is who scripture says, then that merits our allegiance and merits our devotion and worship, but it certainly also merits our our lives, right? And who we are. Um, God, what God is trying to say to the world through us is that important. Pastor, well, we can conclude in saying this as our, our title says, Hope because of Christ.
and Jesus Christ is our hope. And, and there's no hope without Jesus Christ. Pastor, does anybody have any questions or comments or everybody, thoughts? Everybody's pretty quiet this morning. Um, a couple of good mornings from Elia and Olga and Gloria. Good morning, everybody. My Naomi. Just our prayers. And so, yeah, pretty quiet. Um, they're, they're deep in thought this morning. Right. Yeah, <laughs> about being chosen. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, Pastor, if we don't have anything else, then we'll close with prayer. Yes, sir. Loving and generous God, through your gift of Christ and the example of his faithful followers, we have seen how faith, hope, and love are powerful resources for our daily living. Help us to live every day with our eyes and hearts open to your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, brother. Well, I appreciate your time. And uh, like I said uh, earlier, I'm going to be gone this week and take some time off. But uh, Robert and I are going to meet this afternoon to record next Sunday's Sunday School lesson. So uh, it'll still come out at 930. You'll be able to watch it with everybody else and leave comments and all that kind of stuff. Leave more comments. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions. And we have a limited time, but uh, we can figure out how to squeeze, you know, questions and stuff like that in. So otherwise, uh, 1045 and it's about 45 minutes, right? We're going to have worship together. If you're here in the sanctuary, we're glad to see you uh, with your mask on and your socially distant self. Uh, otherwise, be online. And if you are worshiping with us online, you know, be involved, right? And type in some amens and prayer requests and uh, invite people to watch with you on Facebook. And just you know, don't let it be a time where you just kind of pass it where you kind of you got the TV going on in the background and on your phone here. You know, be present in that moment. It's a, it's a blessing for us. I don't know if you know, uh, brother, you're there. I, I tend to read um, names. Last several weeks, read the names of people who are watching. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a reminder that we're all here together. And so if um, it's not like I'm putting your name on the board, like I don't know if that ever happened to you. Checklist. Yeah. <laughs> in elementary school, they put my name on the board and they had a check. To, we're not doing anything like that. We're not taking attendance that way. We're just... Reminding each other of our connection, how good it is to know that we're worshiping together. So anyway, it's at 1045, about 46 minutes. So uh, we'll see you then. If we don't see you any other time until uh, next week or whenever, have a great week, week, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you, Seeker. Thank you, Pastor. God be with you. And let me turn this one off here. And here we go.